You're listening to Paris Search Radio. News, views and reviews from the world of the paranormal from across the UK and beyond. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web. Paris Search UK Radio. Paris Search Radio, broadcasting to the UK and beyond. The views and opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch Radio or its affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to PSH Radio with Carl and Sam only on Parasearch Radio. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are back, obviously, onto the Parasitch Radio banner this time. It's been a while. Um, tonight, we are joined by Celia and Ramath, Ramos, if <laughs> I got that right, and Jonathan, can't say his last name, so apologies, um, from Paranormal Voyages. Welcome, guys. Hi. Um, <laughs> thank you. And, um, and obviously, Carl. Sorry, Carl. I just That's didn't... quite all right. I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just wait for my introduction somewhere along the line during the show. Evening, everybody, and it's good to be back under the new uh, <laughs> the new brand uh, that we're on para uh, the, the new network. So that's great. So I'm um, looking forward to the show. So yeah, good, good. So yeah, it's been a while. Obviously, we met. We've known CC and Jennifer for a while. We met them in Vegas. So, yes, so I'm going to start off first. Could you give us a little background of who you are, guys, and what you do? Uh, Yeah. Um, Jonathan and I have 10 years, a little over 10 years um, plus between us, um, almost five years together investigating. Um, I started in 2007. He also started in 2007, and we've uh, visited multiple places with activity, we've had good places and bad places. Um, I started out in New York and in Connecticut. And John- yeah, we start. We both started out on the east east coast over there. I mean, you know, there's a lot of history and stuff. But um, yeah, so yeah, combined over 20 years together. You know, separate but together combined over 20 years, and. Here we are. We're in Vegas. Let us out here to Vegas. Yep. It, we are a nonprofit. Um, we do help, you know, regular people, residential homes, businesses, whatever, whatever our call is. And we are. Um, we already set up a phone for our um, for people to be able to reach out to us when they need help. So I'll be sending out cards and information on how they can reach us out here in the Las Vegas area soon. That's great. That's great. So um, just to go back to when you were on the East Coast, um, just want to know what sort of triggered your interest in in the field. Was there a particular moment? Was there for each of you, was there a particular incident that happened that actually made you think, hang on, this is what I want to do? Well, um, growing up, I had experiences, things that I didn't really understand. You know, I put off. You know, because as a child and stuff, you're told that it's not real. You know, it's movies, it's fake, you know, stuff like that. So I put off anything that ever happened to me. And as I got a little older, you know, the shows come out. I remember Ghost Hunters came out, and that really sparked my interest in it and um, led me to look more, you know, further into the things that happened to me. Yeah. A little, little further on down the line, I actually started my own group, you know, and went from there. Uh, what about you? What about yourself? The um, how did you sort of get into it? I got into it as well. Um, as a child, I experienced things. As a teenager, I witnessed a whole lot more. And um, you know, in our family, we didn't really talk about it too much because it was like we were the cuckoo ones in the family if we did talk about it. So that basically stood quiet for a while but then like years down the road as an adult I was invited out on my very first investigation with someone and uh, we took care of a residential case and it was one of the worst 
experiences I ever had, and I said I would never do it again, and here I am doing it again. Uh, that was a demonic case, and I just, uh, ever since, it's just, I've been addicted. I can't stop. Yeah, no, I think that I think there's a lot of people out there listening at the moment that that can basically <laughs> take from that because they they get triggered from an an early incident and then they progress and they progress and then they, then they progress. So uh, yeah, um, if you don't mind me asking, um, you obviously said that the, the profound experience was something that was said. I'm never going to do it again. But you end up coming back. Um, not to go into too much detail, but you say it was a, a residential case. Can you give us a little bit of understanding of what? Don't obviously don't go into too many details because obviously it's a private case. Yeah, something that give us give us an idea of what what went on. Uh, yeah, um, I had nightmares the day before of what was going to happen. Um, in my nightmare, <laughs> that something would be growling behind me and would say my name. And during the case, I had that same experience. I was going up their stairs to the bedroom, and something stopped me at the top of the stairs where I'd smelled uh, eggy, rotten, fleshy smell like sulfur. Okay. And that was when I actually heard the growl, and I heard something gurgle my name. And I was bitten in between the shoulder blades. I literally had teeth marks between my shoulder blades. You're all right. Dragged down the stairs by my legs. That was that was just one of the most <laughs> unforgettable experiences ever. Yeah, yeah. You, you're gonna you're gonna remember something like that happening. Um, yeah. So obviously you did the residential case and you had this experience. I presume that uh, as a as a t- the guys that I know you are that you are you obviously completed the case, sorted not sorted out. You then moved on from there. So how did you end up being in Vegas? From You've gone from the East Coast. How did you end up in Vegas for all the places? <laughs> more opportunity. Yeah, we moved there for more opportunities. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is, you know, something we take serious. You know, it's our passion. We do love it. We love to help people. And we want to find out, uh, you know, about, about the paranormal. And mm-hmm. moving up here, there's more opportunities, like you said, and um, this is all right. All right. Yeah, we figured we could um, open up the doors a little more, and hopefully, people will take us more serious. There's so many, so many out there that just like have been putting stuff out there and just making a mockery of the paranormal field, kind of. Thing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so when when you get when you get a case or um, an opportunity, what sort of basis behind of what you do? Do you have like a set routine of what you do? Do you research? Do you then interview? Then investigate? Or so, what is the process for you guys when you go into something? Well, we definitely ask the client what's going on, you know, so we can get a basic idea of uh, their experiences and, and activity. And then we, re- re- you know, research into the location and we go in, you know, do baseline readings and just get the feel of the place and go from there and do an investigation and see what we come out with. And hopefully nothing bad, you know, nothing, you know, where the person has to move or the people or anything like that. And if it is something bad, then we try to rid of it. Okay. And from that basis, when you say you, you get rid of it, so are you both trained in those sort of procedures of how to get rid of something like that? Or do you bring somebody else into your group to do sort of the, the, the that sort of ritual? We both do cleansings. Um, mm-hmm. Celia is more so over that part. Mm-hmm. And if... If it's something a little stronger than what we can we can't do, then we will bring somebody else in. Right. You know right. that. So you, 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 yeah. Okay. So you bring you basically your, your own toolbox, so to say, and then if need be, you bring somebody else in that can help you out. You don't just leave your client standing. That's brilliant. Okay. Um. So so you you find yourself in Vegas because you're looking for bigger opportunities, mm-hmm. um, and obviously. Vegas, which is obviously for for the listeners, 
in the UK is in Nevada. Um, you're surrounded by so many active paranormal locations. Yes. You must be like a kid in a sweet, like a like a, a a chubby kid in a sweet shop. Yes. You, you must be like, oh, we got you've got this, you got because yes. just looking at where looking within an hour, two hours drive from Vegas, you've got locations such as Goldfield, mm-hmm. Clown Motel, Bonnie Springs, Old Charlotte City. You've got so many of these like iconic locations. Mm-hmm. So you must be, you must be, obviously, you, you, I know from knowing you personally, you guys work hard during your day, and then obviously you get the opportunity to do your passion when you've got time. So, so how do you decide on where you go? Do you, because I know, you, I know you've, you've been lucky enough to investigate Goldfield, and you've been lucky enough to investigate Goldfield Hotel, and you've actually met Red, the guy that runs the hotel. Yeah. So how did, how did that happen? Well, we like to travel out and find places, and we decided one day to go to Goldfield, you know, because it's not too far away. It's three hours away. Mm. So we decided to drive out there and just take a look at things, and we ended up finding, you know, a bunch of other locations outside of Goldfield and inside of Goldfield. You know, we had opportunities to investigate. So as of, you know, it's just whatever reaches out to us, basically, Mm. like big locations. I'm not Mm -hmm. talking about, like, the clients, uh, residential places, and stuff like that, but more so the historic locations and and like you said, I mean, there's there's a lot around here, a lot. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and I can see that you're um, just just a quick shout out to one of our presenters on on the uh, on the network. Um, <coughs> that you're wearing an Area 51 shirt. Yes. <laughs> um, just like a big shout out to Mark and. I'll just say it now. I'm, the only time I'm ever going to do it on our network is aliens. There we go. Um, but yeah, no. So you've got <laughs> you've got this whole melting pot of amazing locations. And obviously, you said you do the residential cases, and you um, you look at those as well. But tell tell. I know when I when I spoke to you in, in uh, when we were at when we were having a couple of drinks in vegas you were telling us about when you went to the clown museum mm-hmm. yeah it's um it's it's definitely haunted i mean you, you think like yeah. the clown hotel you know <laughs> it's just clowns it's you know for tv or whatever they did you know what they did for the tv thing but we went there and actually we just came across that we didn't even know we were even that, near yeah. we didn't the know place. How we, we went were. in goldfield <laughs> And we were talking to some locals about the hauntings there in Goldfield. And they're like, oh, the Clown Motel's, you know, just 30 minutes down the road here. And I was like, oh, really? So we went and checked it out. And, you know, they have the graveyard right beside the hotel. Mm-hmm. All the things happen in hotels. It's been there for a long time. So, but but uh, from our investigations, we believe that the hauntings there are coming from the graveyard itself. Yeah. It's The graveyard dates back to, I think, 1901. And, you know, we had a lot of experiences there. Mm. Can you tell us about some of the experiences you had at the clown? Yeah, the, uh, the famous clown that moves inside the office there. Actually, the first day we went, um, and we got this. I got this on my my camera on my phone, and I didn't even know that I, it happened for one. And then after that, I didn't know I captured it. But uh, the clown, you know, its hands supposed to move, and we were in there talking to the owner Bob. Um, and then a local lady was in there, and she was talking to Celia um, about the clown. No, go ahead and tell me what um, saying. Yeah, she had noticed um, my reaction towards the clown, and she was asking me at the time if I was a textural empath, if I could feel energy off of objects, which I actually can. Um, and at the time was when the clown dropped his right arm down and she was about what two feet away from him yeah Yeah, and it kind of like startled her because she was like i didn't touch him i swear i didn't touch him (laughs) and i was uh i was filming on my phone all the clowns they got a bunch of a lot of dolls clown dolls in the wall and i was panning around and i panned at the right time whenever the clown's uh hand and arm released from its its lap and i caught i didn't even know i captured it 
But um, the same day, that night we did the investigation, we uh, captured the, the clown's hand moving again. And you could see, or the meter went off. Celia notices that the meter goes off mm -hmm. at the exact time that the, the clown's hand moves. So that was actually pretty good evidence on the, the second part. The first yeah. part could have easily been debunked, but... You the know, second just, time that it moved, you could see it just moved, like, just, it didn't drop down, but you could see it just moved it slightly. Yeah, about a half an inch. About a half inch, yeah. It was pretty cool. But uh, in the graveyard, we captured voices. Um, someone said, hey, in my ear. Um, you got screaming. Actually, yeah, I've got the, a scream that I captured. I can try to play it on my Bluetooth here if uh, and see if you guys can hear it. If you, if you want, want to. to. If you want me to do that. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Uh, this, we were actually walking into the graveyard, and... Um, as we're walking in, I didn't even hear the scream with my ears, but it was on the phone, and it's very loud, which is odd that we didn't hear it. Um, so this this was just recorded on your phone, or did you record it? Or? Yeah, I was just um. He was filming the entrance of the graveyard. Yeah, and that's when he got we we noticed it. Here it is. Okay. Get here. All right. Hear it. Right there. That's that scream right there at the end. Did yeah, you, hear? You, you can just about, you uh, probably because of obviously the, the how we're doing that, you can hear. Um, I, I well, I heard it through from my own thing without any headphones on. You can hear just at the end. There's a there's a scream. Yeah, yeah. It's, it sounds like yeah. a lady just yeah. just screaming the top of her lungs. But we didn't hear this with our own ears. But after replaying it back, we captured that scream at the same time, which I mean you can obviously see right here. But mm -hmm. there's an that goes by at the exact same time, an orb of energy. Okay. What 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 we'll do if if it's okay with you guys after the show we'll put a link on. We'll get some sort of actual so clip so people can actually hear that if that's okay with you guys. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Oh cool. yeah. So we'll do we'll just in case obviously being on the radio and you're playing it through a microphone, people <laughs> are gonna hear it the same as what you actually hear it when you're hearing it direct from from the recorder. So we'll 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 sort something out for the listeners, anybody that's interested in that. So Sam, have you? Um, I, I believe you've got some. You want to ask you guys a question? Yeah, I've got a few. So obviously, I was checking out your Facebook page earlier because I never really have. Sorry, <laughs> but um, I was checking out some of your videos. Obviously, you did post a few videos up didn't you of the when you were investigating the clown motel two spirit box sessions is that correct yes. yeah we did a lot of the spirit box um the ones which obviously you have on your face obviously cc asks the spirit to say her name and obviously you get a clear response through the spirit box obviously saying it's pretty don't you mm -hmm. yes and then the second one Obviously, Jonathan asks, are we speaking to a spirit who died in, in there? And obviously, you had a clear response again saying no. Yeah, we, we got a lot of good evidence there. I haven't been able to put anything together because um, a little over a year ago, my back went out on me, unfortunately. And it, it progressively got worse and worse up until actually a year ago around this time to where I could hardly walk. So it's been it's been about a year now since um, we haven't did like any investigations or anything like that. We've traveled to some places, but I, I hadn't been able to actually do the investigations because of my back. Mm -hmm. uh, it's unfortunate, but I, you know I'm getting back into it now. I'm feeling a lot better after my two surgeries, so that's a good thing. I still have one more to go, but I'm feeling like I said a lot better. Able to walk, able to stand for a long period of time, so I'm happy about that. 
That's brilliant. That's brilliant. And we, we, we wish you, everybody, uh, myself and Sam and all the listeners that we have, just we wish you every success with your recovery. Um, and following on from what Sam said and obviously what you guys have been saying, you – when obviously were you doing paranormal voyages when you were out on the east coast or did that really start when you were in vegas um yeah i was doing i started the well i came up with the name um in the group uh, which was actually of myself before that i had a whole group but i, I was doing things by myself mm -hmm. um, 2013 uh, i came up with paranormal voyages and actually, which is weird, and I was going to ask if y'all put this date together on here because today in 2014, Celia and I first met. <laughs> yep. Through the oh, so, so you're saying today, yeah, yes. today is your anniversary of you two meeting? Oh, yes. yeah, meeting through the paranormal. Yeah. Five years. Well. Five I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I haven't got anything in my glass, but I'm going to raise <laughs> glass. Happy anniversary to the bear of you, and you, you are two amazing people. Um, so, um, so you came, obviously, uh, Jonathan, you were saying you came up with this uh, concept of the paranormal voyages. Um, and then, obviously, when you got to Vegas, you were doing stuff, and you've obviously got this melting pot of so many locations to look at. Obviously, sadly, that you have you've been out because of your back, and you're recovering now. So, tell us about the early stages when you were doing stuff with um, uh, Celia. When you sort of, where what sort of locations you were looking at, and where did you go with uh, Celia and I? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we. Um... Uh, basically, Paranormal Voyages really started off with us two. I mean, like I said, I was doing it by myself. But um, it started off with us in about mid-2014. And um, one of the first places, big places, that we went to was the Charleston Jail. Mm -hmm. And uh, that place was just insane. You know, that's in, in South Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina. And... Um, I mean, we had a lot of other places we did in, in Connecticut. We did yeah. a radio station. We did some residential places. We did some cemeteries um, as well. Yeah. Yeah. An old uh, antique store that used to be like a mm -hmm. bank. We had a lot of crazy experiences there. Yeah. But the, the jail, I'd say, would be our most prominent one, the biggest, one, biggest that, one that we did. And just, just, for, just for the listeners um, in the UK that probably don't know about it, do you want to give us a quick, um, just a quick synopsis of um where what the location is because obviously you said it's in south carolina it's called the old charleston city jail um am i right and i could be wrong uh because i've had a long day at work the the ghost adventures have investigated there as well yeah they investigated there i believe in 2011 mm -hmm. i believe also i think paranormal state investigated there and uh ghost hunters Okay, so it's it's obviously a very active place. You got three of the biggest yeah. um, TV shows of the of the time investigating it. So you've obviously gone there. Can you give us a quick how what what makes that your most prominent investigation so far? Um, well, Celia, actually, during uh, our interview, we were interviewing one of the tour guides there. And uh, she'd got scratches while I was doing that. She was filming. Um, we had a bunch of voices. The first time that I captured my name on the spirit box, um, I was grabbed multiple times all over my arms and legs and neck. I was um, poked in the back. Yeah, she was poked in her back um, very hard. Yeah, actually. very hard. I was also being groped during the investigation <laughs> constantly. <laughs> Yeah, it was good. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the brass old feet jokies on my side that had lifted up off the off of my side. Um, we actually did an, an episode on that. Um, yeah, wasn't very well put together, but it was uh, it was it's still interesting if you could make it all the way through it. <laughs> but um, but it, it was straight cut, you know, no cuts, nothing like that. 
through the episode. A lot of evidence um, wasn't put into the uh, episode. I don't know what happened, but yeah. It dates <laughs> back um, to the 1800s. Uh, Civil War. Charleston is known for the Civil War. First mm. shot fired there. Um, okay. Um, Sam, I believe um, you want to ask a couple of questions and uh, do a quick shout out before we carry on? Yes, certainly do so. A quick shout out to people in the chat room, Annie Tours, KK Jackson, I think it is. Yay! <laughs> and obviously the lovely, Je- lovely Jeremy. <laughs> so, going to Arizona now, to the Big Cage Theatre. Another video I watched was obviously. Jonathan, you were taking photos, CC, and Jonathan was filming. And apparently, you like I've listened to the video and I don't hear it myself. But did you say, Jonathan, that there was you can slightly hear old music playing over because obviously they've got speaking in there or something, haven't they? Actually, um, this was right before my first surgery. We were a couple hours away from Tombstone, mm-hmm. so I had to go, obviously. <laughs> um, and we checked out the place, and um, I didn't expect really for anything to happen. You know, mm-hmm. we were just visiting. But um, we went in there, and the music that you were talking about is actually they have music, really low music playing from that air. And in the distance, you can hear the person in the front uh, talking to visitors, you know, explaining the history and stuff. And as we were in there, I was recording, and so he was taking pictures. There were people way far away from us in the other room and in the basement area, and I was on the other side. In the video, you can see Celia taking pictures, and I'm panning around, and in the microphone of my phone, you can hear a girl go, ah. Before you hear her voice, you'll hear like a tap, tap, tap yeah. sound, which is actually the floor cracking. But then you'll hear the ha ah, kind but of But I've got it on my sound. phone, and you can hear it very clearly, so I'm going to play it for, for you. You can hear the, the guy in the background talking in the other room on the intercom and the, the music playing, and then the tap of the floor. Okay. Uh, and like I said, we'll, we will do it again. We'll make sure uh, listen, you can actually play on it and hear it as well after the show. <laughs> There's a hut halfway through, isn't there? Yeah, I'll I'll play it. There you go. Um, Like I said, obviously we're we're playing it through speakers, so um, when you listen to it, in, in in real time um, it sounds a lot clearer so I do apologise if anybody's listening and thinking what are they playing but we'll put <laughs> links up there you guys can listen to it you can listen to it through headphones but you can I've listened to both both the clips that um, you guys have played I've watched I've watched the videos and stuff like that and when you listen to them on your normal headsets or your earphones you can hear clearly what we're talking about tonight um one thing I wanted to say quickly about the birdcage, because obviously the birdcage and tombstone is an iconic location. Um, and I don't think our UK listeners and uh, realise how small the birdcage theatre is. Because it's, it's, it's not, obviously you see it on film and everything like this, but... It is a very, very small location, isn't it? Yeah, it was smaller, smaller than what we had thought, too. When yeah. We went in. There's only a couple of rooms. You know, you got the the room you enter into, and then the uh, theater room, the backstage, and then the downstairs area right. where the, the ladies stayed, the ladies of the night stayed. And, um, you know, in my video, you can see their booths that they stood at, you know, and the guys could call for them or whatever. But um, actually, that's, that's another thing I wanted to mention when I got that voice, which I wasn't expecting and didn't know until we got uh, back to the uh, hotel, I looked up to uh, one of the booths in the curtain to where they would walk through. The uh, left side of the curtain was opened, and it swung back and forth. 
and I watched it do this, and there was no air. I scoped out everything. There was no way possible that that could have happened, and uh, the doors were locked. And if I remember rightly, you as as public when you go into the bird cage, you can't actually get up to those boxes, can you? Yeah, they've got they've got them locked up. You yeah. can see the doors too, and there was no one up there, and it's, it's yeah. very narrow to walk through mm-hmm. as well. So even even on a public thing, you know, you can sort of like clarify that there's nobody going to be there, and et cetera, et cetera. So that that's always that's always quite good for the. The, the the purists of listeners that were listening about how you investigate because at the end of the day you can go to a location as a guest um and experience something as you guys um knew about me going to the haunted museum for the first time in vegas i just went as a, as a joe public tourist paid my money made it through seven rooms so um we just go from there so you can go to these locations you don't have to be investigating right and you can still pick up on things take photos do recordings just get some because at the end of the day as as i've always said you can be investigating they, they these things don't just happen when we're there they're happening the activity is happening all the time stay yep. not whatever so yeah so over to you sam so do you guys have anything paranormal happen to you at home <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'll let Sue talk a little bit, but yes, when, when we first moved in, definitely, and, and still do. Um, every now and then, uh, we have little experiences here. I, um, I usually tend to feel a little off when I know that there's something that doesn't belong here. So I'll just bust out my sage and and my Palo Santo, which is a sacred wood, and I start burning and and walking through the apartment and Jonathan will just let us say, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, um, usually he'll join in and read pray for me or he'll uh, help me stage and cleanse the place and stuff. But we've had, um, we've had a lot of visitors here um, spiritually uh, come and, and visit us in the, in the evening during our sleep. And it's so funny how they visit you when you're sleeping. Um, you're most vulnerable then. So, but, um, I've seen shadow figures. I've had objects move <laughs> yeah, we while actually, watching television. Actually captured stuff moving in our home here on camera. Again, didn't even know that and she captured it. Didn't even know she captured. Uh, it, it's it's crazy. Uh, what I thought was a shadow was actually one of my shoes, uh, my sandals moving. And I thought it was a shadow, but when he looked really good, he looked really well, and he said, that's your sandal that's moving. It's not a shadow. If I had seen that move, I probably wouldn't have been sitting in my living room anymore after that. But, yeah. we, we... Um, Our first day when we moved here in 2015, uh, or our first night, um, we had only had a blow-up mattress in here. And that morning, I woke. I was woken up to scratching noises of like you know plastic, something scratching on plastic, which was the blood mattress. That's what woke. Mm-hmm. And as I opened my eyes a little bit, I seen this about seven foot tall figure standing at my feet, and it was taking its nails on its toes and scratching our blood mattress. And this figure was completely white, and it was uh, cloaked like a grim reaper, but like I said, white, and its face. The cloak over its face was form-fitting, and eyes was sunken in, and cheekbones were sunken in. And I just prayed to the Lord, you know, uh, please take it away, and it went away. That's okay. funny. Um, just, just, just to go over something briefly, just <clears throat> I can guarantee I can hear people in the chat room and um, people listening to this going, and why are you still there? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um is there is there something about where you live, as in the yeah. land? Because obviously you live in Vegas and it's relatively new, but they keep developing, tearing things down, rebuilding, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Is is there something about the land, or do you think it was something that was drawn in from your investigations? Mm, no, this it's the land. It's it's the area we do live in, Las Vegas, and we're I mean right almost at the strip. So in this place, obviously, it's been here for a little while. So thirty-five years, yeah, <clears throat> thirty years, thirty years, yeah. and um, 
Uh, so it, it's hard telling what's happened here before we came. Mm-hmm. Like I said, Las Vegas. So a lot of things happen here. If you were to look into the news, and a lot they don't share. Yep. So it was definitely something that was already here, I believe. And um, like I said, when stuff like this happens, we cleanse, and it's gone for a while. But again, you know what we do? We go places. We go to haunted places. So we attract this, and it does follow us. So it's a never-ending thing with us. So we do have to cleanse at least once a month or so. I was. <laughs> I was told by a medium that um, I I have that light that they're drawn to. Yeah, the beacon. It's a very bright light, and that uh, I tend to bring stragglers home, and he saw <laughs> consequences too. Uh, it's it's both. Like I said, they know we we can communicate with them. You know, we have a history with it, so we do have that little light bulb above our heads when yeah. we're around here. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Totally, totally agree. Um, so, obviously, um, you you guys live in Vegas, and obviously you say you're just off the main, the main strip, and as people know, that strip has changed and changed and changed over, over the years, and that place has got a lot of history. It's on a, on a lot of land that has had some good times, bad times, a lot of human emotion in Vegas. Yep, yeah. a lot of in- Going through the years and from the early days to even even currently, um, and it's it's an amazing place. Anybody that's listening that hasn't been, you've got to get yourself out there because it is an amazing place. It's not just all about casinos, gambling, and all this sort of stuff. There's so uh, there's on the other flip side of it. There's the history. You've got places there which fascinates me about like if you're into like the mob and stuff like that you can go and learn about how vegas came up then there's obviously the the stories behind those things so the land is just rich with history mm-hmm. um so you guys are now in vegas you're doing you're going to be continuing your paranormal journey um i know sam wants to briefly ask you and talk to you about a particular subject which That's I'm going to later. <laughs> later. <laughs> later. <Yeah. laughs> but I just have to pass it over to Sam because I know she wants to talk to you about um, the Haunted Museum um, when yourself and Sam went. Sadly, I couldn't make it that day. I was um, I was still recovering from the day before when I went right. to the museum. But um, over to you, Sam. Just um, what do you want to want to go through? So, Cece, she, she just knows exactly what I'm probably going to ask her. So, when me and Cece, me and Cece jo- and Jonathan went, um, it was it, was it, we, did, we, did we get to the gift shop, you st- st- started feeling burning, or was it directly f- as soon as you walked out of the dip box, box room? I cannot remember. Cece. It was the gift shop that I felt burning. Can I just jump in there in a second? When you, when you started the feeling in the uh, the gift shop, how close were you to the chair? The big yeah. chair. Chair. Um, I was actually in the room to the right of the chair. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That makes a lot of sense to me. Sorry, <laughs> Sam. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because obviously you say that it's you. Don't you, CC? Obviously, you were telling me that you always seem to get scratched once you come from the Dibbix box room. Yeah, I usually, um, the two times that we had gone, I had left there with scratches. Three, well, three, three times. Oh, well, yeah, from down the Divic box and room. Um, and down my leg. Actually, yeah, because re- just recently when we took uh, a friend of ours there, I had it down my legs and on my back. But um, when we were with Sam, the, I usually... It's the Derek box room, but for some reason it happened at the uh, gift shop this time. I was a little too happy. <laughs> I got to the gift. <laughs> they didn't like you. That's what it is. <laughs> so you you obviously were in the gift shop, um, and anybody that's not been there, it's it's basically you come out of the the museum, and I'm only saying this from first hand. Um, Because I spent an awful lot of time in that gift shop on my visits. Uh, Didn't make it around the rest of the museum, but I still made it a lot of time in there. And you've got two rooms. You've got one on your left, one on your right, and then you've got the 
the exit out of the, out of the building. It's a lovely little place. They've got loads of stuff you can buy. See, so you you got scratched. You felt heat. What mm. do you think was happening to you at that particular moment? Well, okay. The they say that there's a child spirit there um, that seems to be mischievous. Well, that didn't feel like a child spirit to me. The energy in that building alone is just, it's remarkable. I mean, it's, there's just bad, overall bad energy in there. And as quaint and as adorable as the gift shop is, that was not a child that scratched me. Mm-hmm. So I don't think it was a child at all. And there no. was something a little more malignant. So, uh, so I spoke quite consent uh, quite for a long period of time because i was in there for quite a long period of time to one of the manageresses of that place um and she said that was there was one particular area of the gift shop that is more active than the other okay. and that's why i asked you which side were you in and you you said exactly the same place that she told and she said exactly the same thing there's a there's a child energy okay. in that area that doesn't like people going into that area. She's not a child. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. No, no, no. no. <laughs> trust, trust me, I've, I've been there and yeah, there's there's no child running around that place. Oh. Um, but I, I'm just... So you physically felt hot. Yes. You then experienced... And I, 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 I remember when you came back to... when Because I, I was um, back at the, um, at the Luxor when you guys were there and you showed me the photos when you got back. Yes. Just tell our listeners what happened there. Um, uh, you are you talking about the photos from when I left the Divic box room? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, there's the energy in the Divic box room is more like a foggy, heavy, moist energy. I don't know if that sounds mm-hmm. right. <laughs> something that would be in a dark dank cellar like if you're in an old cellar that's the energy that I fe- that I felt that I feel every time I go into the Dybbuk box room um, and I also hear a lot of murmuring like whispering in my ears I don't know if that's normal maybe I'm cuckoo I don't know what it is but th- it's in that particular room that's when I open myself up in, in that room now Deep down, I was praying that nothing come home with us. I was praying deep down. And as I exited, as I was standing in the room with Jonathan and we were exiting the room, I felt the burning sensation in my back. It was the first time that we went. And we entered the Peggy room. I started to feel the burning a little more. But I know that the burning started in the Dybbuk box room. That was the first time. Jonathan took photos. That's the photos we showed you. Yeah. The second time was also in the Dybbuk box room. This time, I was a little more, can I say, ballsy? Yeah, you can say whatever you like. It's 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 British radio. We're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I was invincible the second time we went to the museum. And I says, you know, this thing isn't going to bother me. You know, I walk with God. This is not going to bother me. And as I exited the room, I felt the burning in my back again. This time I had more on my back. I think there was like six scratches, a total of six scratches on my back this time. And they were a little deeper because one of them seemed to look like it was um, getting brighter and beginning to bleed. And the guy uh, remembered us from the first time we were there because she was the first person to get scratched. Mm-hmm. That was on their opening night. Yeah, yeah, we were there on opening day and stuff, so it's, just, yeah. it's, it's a crazy place. Um, went into uh i had one weird experience there and i think actually it was with sam sam was with us mm-hmm. um in the the mirror oh the Bella, the Bella Lugosi yeah room. <laughs> we went in there and i went toward the back where they have this uh, big picture from i think silent hill or something the movie silent hill he has in there and i felt dizzy and it was weird because i you know i don't never feel that way and then after everyone got in there, the guide said, well, you know, people usually feel dizzy over here toward this picture. And, you know, it's true. It happened right. to me. And it's not a it haunted was, photo. Either. It's not a haunted 
image either. I no, mean, it's, it's just that eerie movie, looking, but yeah. That was it's my weird. one and only like um, experience physically, you know, like that there. Yeah. But the energy, I can feel the energy in certain rooms. Mm-hmm. And stuff, definitely. Yeah, because um, obviously you guys have said, uh, I know you guys were there when the, you went to the, the opening day there. You were also there when they did the live. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Recently. Um, so you, being in Vegas, you, you've got the opportunity and obviously you've, you've, you've experienced the place. But the thing I want Sam to basically ask uh, about is the time when you guys went down there and obviously, I knew about the dizzy spell in the Bella Degosi mirror room because that's the one of the first rooms I started to feel a little bit weird. And then by the time I got to the camper van room for Doctor Kavokian, yes, I never get that name right. I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. But that's when I got hit big time. And then when I went into the room with the cauldron, that's when I got flattened. But Sam wants to ask you a couple of questions about your time there. So I'll show over to Sam. So, Cece, <laughs> yeah, and remember when we were both there, we were in, obviously, Dr. Kevorkian's room, and you obviously turned to me and you said that you could keep, you kept seeing someone pop their head up behind the van. Right, right. Yeah, um, you know, the that day... And, and that's like the second time I've seen that because on the first opening night when we when we saw the Kevorkian van, I thought I saw someone on the driver's side because I was standing on the passenger side, but I thought I saw someone on the driver's side pop up, and I just assumed it was somebody who was bent, who bent down and tied their shoe, and I just let it go. But when I when we went with you. I kept seeing someone pop in there. I was standing in the same spot, and I kept seeing someone's head, like, bopping up and down, like if they were peeking through the driver's side window. But there was no one there on that side. So that was just a little a little weird for me. I don't think I really obviously knew it spot um, felt anything when I went with you guys. But obviously... The first, like obviously the only, was it the second time? I can't even remember, but I know um, the first, no, it was the second time I was with you guys. I think you went in the demon house room and I was, I just blatantly refused to go in the demon house room because there was something about, there's just something about that room anyway. And obviously the, I was talking to the tour guide we had and I kept seeing a lady like, <laughs> walking around and I was like this is driving me mad this is and the tour guide was like yeah okay and then she's like oh okay and then people are like but it was a tour guide and I was like no it wasn't a tour guide <laughs> you know <laughs> so yeah yeah that that you could feel the energy coming off of that door in the demon house room they don't even have to open it and you can feel the energy coming off the door and I was also hearing um what sounded like a woman crying that day and I asked the the tour guide if there was someone in the hallway crying, and she didn't hear anything the first time. But the second time, she heard it. And I kept hearing someone sobbing. And she heard it the second time, and she was she stopped dead in her the tracks of her conversa- uh, conversing with me and, and said, I, I think I heard it this time. <laughs> and it was coming from that room. From that room. Mm-hmm. Well, um, anybody that's not visited and uh, hasn't been to Vegas, uh, or they're going to be in Vegas, you have to go to that museum. You have to do that. You have to go and see Angry Joe, who is an absolute sweetheart, lovely guy. Everybody at the museum, even down to the tour guides, to the performers that appear occasionally, that is to emphasise your experience. They're not there to scare you. Um, they're there to basically make your experience amazing but what i would say is please 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 if you are going to go there treat it with some respect because it's not just and i think that's my main problem was because of the year i had i didn't i went i went there with a little bit of a blase approach to it and it kicked me up the what's it so um but yeah if you go there just anybody listening 
get yourself out there because I know there's a few people there listening tonight that are going to Vegas and they will be visiting the museum. Just be prepared for what you're going to experience. Yeah. Um, so uh, this hour is flying by and I can see what sort of the time is. Um, just going back to... Um, do you collaborate with anybody or do you just literally, is it just you two? Do you have somebody there that looks at your videos, puts it together, or do you do every, all the work together? We do it together. Yeah, we do everything together. Um, uh, Investigation-wise, obviously, it's both of us. I usually take the lead role. It just depends on the situation. Um, after that, I do go over all the evidence, my own, uh, myself, and you know audio video all of that if i have to several times just to make sure um as of putting anything together i haven't done anything in a while because of my back Mm -hmm. i'm like feeling better now so we hope to to be doing a lot uh, a lot more things last year we were supposed to go film a pilot episode out east but that didn't happen because my back went out on me. So mm-hmm. this year, I'm hoping it's a whole lot better and we can get those things on the, the raw and, and go on. Yeah, so. exactly, exactly. So once you're fully fit and you're out there, um, you know us, we'll support you, whatever you do. We'll we'll publish, uh, we'll post yeah. anything you guys do. And we what we will do um, after the show, we will, pub, uh, we will put the link out uh, to your website, for your videos and so people can hear see what we've been discussing today so um there's a couple of other questions i know sam's probably got something but we've only got a little bit longer so i'm going to jump in first and i'll let sam go in um i sat with you in vegas jonathan and we were discussing um video and how you take it and the equipment you sort of use because i know there'll be people listening tonight who are interested in the tech yeah, yeah. um so mm. what i want to ask you is like there's a couple of questions is basically what do you use to capture your videos on and what basically is the equipment that your is your go-to bit of equipment um obviously the infrared cameras are a big huge help um it's, uh, I believe it's called the AX53 Sony camera. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a great, great camera. I've got a couple of those. Um, obviously, the mail meters, um, voice recorders, XLS cameras, the infrared camera, or the, uh, excuse me, the thermal cameras. Um, I've got a few other things that I'm, I've added in that I'm going to be testing out as well. Um, new theories, different theories which I hope to be able to explain later down the road once I've been able to test them out with the equipment that I've gotten. So hopefully you'll hear from that soon. Um, uh, that's good. That sounds really good. And when I, when I see you next, we can have a, we can have a boys kit day and have a play around. Because <laughs> <with this equipment. laughs> you obviously know I'm, I'm, yeah, I've got literally, if you, if, if this screen that people could see and you moved that way, you'd see, equipment all over the place so <laughs> no, that's great um, um the, the, before i pass you back over to sam um <clears throat> obviously you said you were going to be coming up you should have been filming the pilot and obviously because of, sadly you're back and everything like that um is there any plans to redo that pilot when you're fully fit yeah that's that's the plan for this year hopefully um like i said things are going good right now so hopefully we can get this going very soon. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if the location that we were going to before is going to change or not. It's a possibility. Mm-hmm. But we were going to head out to Tennessee to a place that has a um, little mob history. I didn't go too far on it. But um, So, yeah, that, that's definitely I, in the place. I love what you've just said there, the mob history, because I know – this is why I said to you about what brought you to Vegas, because I know there's a certain person sitting there that's smiling the face off. <laughs> has mob links. Yeah. So, so he has some mob history. So I yeah. think that is, a, that is a brilliant link to whatever yeah. you guys do, is that you've got that link, you've got that 
and our personal views and things like that. Uh, huh? Explain what the link is. No, not yet. I'm going to keep that as a surprise. Well, that'll, <laughs> that'll be, no, keep that for a surprise. That'll be for when you return on the show in, in, in yeah. when we get you back on the show. Um, yeah. I do I do want to say something real quick. I know we're running out of time. Um, no one's probably heard this yet except for Vegas residents, if it's already streamed across the inter- internet yet or not. But... Um, it's been confirmed through several news agencies here in Las Vegas, sadly, to the paranormal investigators and enthusiasts out there will know. But uh, unfortunately, they're tearing down Bonnie Springs Ranch in March uh, for housing development. Now, that's been confirmed through two different agencies here. Um, it's, it's very sad. There's a lot of history here. Um, I'm not sure if they're really going to tear down the buildings or not because they do have a lot of history to them or someone's going to take them, move them elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Probably hearing it here for you, so I just want to let you guys know. Get on the plane tonight so we can go to Bonnie's <laughs> plane. <laughs> me, and Sam, with me and Sam, we're booking tickets. We'll be out there shortly. <laughs> All right, uh, Sam, over to you. Um, a question from the chat room. Um... What places would you guys like to visit? What places? Well, yeah. obviously, UK. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers um, crossed. Tell them get your holiday sorted. <laughs> the UK, because I know there's a lot of great and uh, places out there to investigate. Um, Italy is one of them as well. Uh huh. We would love to go to Romania and Transylvania as well. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. There's a lot of places with yeah. a lot of history that we want to we want to stop, and and hopefully we'll be doing that soon. Yes, hopefully. Cool. It's a shame about Bonnie Springs. I know. <laughs> That's one place we want to take you guys to. Oh wow! Oh wow! <laughs> other places. We'll go to those other places. <laughs> Exactly. We're, 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 when we're back out there, there's, there's, there's um, my list from last time has suddenly got a lot, lot bigger. So, um, yeah, we could, we could be doing a, a two day road trip instead of a one day road trip. Yeah, why <laughs> not? You guys got to stop at Madame Tussauds too because it's we investigated there and it's really haunted. Wasn't expected it to be, but it's definitely haunted. Yeah, um, crazy. Just, just for the list. Um, Madame Two Swords is part of a casino on the Strip. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I know the Ghost Adventures guys have, 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 have investigated there, but you guys got the opportunity to investigate just the two of you yeah. at this location. And I know you, we, we could be chatting for ages. We've only got one hour. We'll get you back on and we'll, we will cover all your other in, in amazing cases. So... Um, I know we're going to be we're running quickly running out of time. So personally, I want to thank you both for coming on. Thank you, thank you for having us. And uh, it's been a pleasure to have to mark our first show back on air after a, a long while, back on the radio again. And we I couldn't have asked for two of most amazing people, which I care and love about a lot. And I know Sam will say exactly the same. I'm going to pass you back to the boss. And I'm just going to say, we'll see you next week. Um, We're back on air next Thursday. But over to you, Sam. All right. All right. Right. I'm not going to do say now. But, yeah, honestly, thank you so much, guys. And a little bit of something as well. Um, Coincidence, I don't know. But this this time last year, we had you guys on as well for our first ever show back. Anniversary to all of us then. <laughs> Hang on, Sam. Sorry, I'm just jumping in what? there. So <laughs> it's the anniversary of you two getting together uh-huh. or meeting for the first time. It's the anniversary of us doing the first show with you guys and also the anniversary. Okay, there's something working. Weird. <laughs> right, okay, sorry. <laughs> Sam, <laughs> that's yeah, that's just weird. So it going on there. It's fate, guys. It's fate, I think. <laughs> so, yes, we have a minute to away to go. So I just want to thank you, Cece and Jonathan. Again, love you to bits. Like Carl said, we are literally family. Um, 
<laughs> Thank you, obviously, to Carl. Uh, everybody in the chat room, obviously the lovely Carrie who's allowed us to come under the Parasites Radio banner because we were getting to that point where we were like, right, we need to be back on air. So thank you to Carrie. Um, and we will obviously be back next Thursday with, with, I don't know, but we will be back next Thursday, guys. Thank you very much. And it, oh, but. <laughs> and I'll, I'll before Sam gets a little bit of emotional because I know she's getting a little bit of emotional there. So <laughs> I just want to say thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, CC, for coming back on. Um, and we will be back next Thursday. We will be announcing our guest uh, in in the next couple of days. Um, thank you again, guys. Thank you to uh, the new network that we're on. It's a pleasure to be on here. It, obviously, I'm um, an old face on this network. I appear on various different shows on there but this is this is morgan sam's baby um so to speak so thank you guys and we look forward to speaking to you guys next week with a new guest we'll announce that shortly but once again last thing i want to say is thank you guys for joining us tonight thank you for being in the chat room thank you for interacting thank you for basically making this an amazing first show back on air and we will see you next week. Thanks, Bye. Guys. Thank you, guys. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Don't forget to join us for more shows throughout the week. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and the World Wide Web to keep up to date with all the shows right here on Parasearch Radio.